I'm very glad to be here today. I'm very impressed by the audience. It's very large. So thank you for coming. <laughs> so I'm, I'm here today to make a presentation about France's low carbon strategy. So um, first I will explain to you why did France decided to embark on such a low carbon strategy. Uh, well, of course, we are facing um, a climate emergency since the, and it's a real global challenge since temperature will rise up uh, very fast uh, during the coming years. And so we have decided uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions very quickly. So first, when we, uh, when we speak about greenhouse gas emission, it's mainly uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, but it's also methane, CH4, and nitrous oxide, N2O. Uh, but to make it simpler, I will then refer in my presentation to carbon emission, since um, carbon dioxide represents 75% of those different gas. So um, we need to reduce carbon emission very quickly, and this is the first uh, explanation why we decided to, to work on this national low carbon strategy. And we also need and want to be consistent with the commitment ba made by France and the European uh, countries under the Paris Climate Agreement in 2015. And so our national low carbon strategy is the French roadmap to reducing carbon emissions uh, in all sectors with three main goals. The first one is a 40% reduction of carbon emission by 2030 compared to 1990. The second goal is to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. And the third goal is to reduce the French people carbon footprint. So uh, what does it mean? Carbon neutrality well, you know, it's a balance between carbon emission. Sorry, it's a balance between carbon emission and carbon absorption. It means that the volume of carbon emission by 2050 will have to be compensated by the same volume of carbon absorption. And to get this balance, we we'll have to reduce very significantly our emissions. Carbon footprint, it refers to the emission associated with the consumption of the French people, including those related to the production uh, and transport of imported goods and services. So, uh, oh, sorry, okay. Okay, good. So how did France organize itself to organize and to achieve uh, this uh, strategy? Uh, first, it started with a law in 2015 uh, relating to energy transition and green growth, which define uh, our strategy as a French roadmap in terms of climate change mitigation. We designed a baseline scenario with short-term and medium-term emissions reduction targets framed by carbon budgets. I will come back on that a little later. Uh, the uh, national low carbon strategy also provides public policy guidelines for implementing the transition to a low carbon economy sober in energy and material in applied in all sectors of activity. Public consultation uh, were important in this process. We know that the impact of this climate change related policy can be huge for the population and for the economy at local and national level. So we did ra uh, wide ranging consultations. Um, with st stakeholders first, uh, businesses, NGOs, trade unions, MPs, local authorities, experts, and with the public. 
In terms of governance, the definition and implementation of our strategy is supervised by a general secretariat for ecological planification, which is placed under the authority of the prime minister and uh, whose mission is to make sure that every ministerial departments are consistent in their policy with our national low carbon strategy. A second key element is the establishment of a high council for climate with uh, different independent experts whose mission is to advise the government. And uh, finally, the national strategy is regularly monitored, assessed, and revised every uh, five years. So now to understand where we want to go, uh, it's important to understand, uh, understand sorry, what is the situation in France today. If we look at the French energy production, we can see that 50 years ago, two-thirds of the energy produced in France was coal in black and gas in grey. We've been gradually uh, switching to nucle nuclear energy in yellow, which now represents 70% of our primary energy. Today we have a fleet of 56 nuclear reactors that were built uh, and commissioned uh, from the late uh, 70s to the early 90s. What you can see also on this slide is that the part of renewable today is about 30%, which was already the case 50 years ago. At that time it was mainly wood and hydroelectricity. And it's still the case today, but with a little bit of wind and solar energy in addition. And uh, finally, you can see that the total energy production in France is about 1400 terawatt per hour. And now if we look uh, at the energy used in France, You can see that total energy used in France is around 2,500 terawatt per hour to compare to the 1,400, uh, 1400 produced in France, which means that we need to import about 45% of our needs, and it's mainly uh, oil uh, in blue and gas in grey that you can see. Um, another thing is that you can see is that French reached a peak in energy consumption in 2005 at around 3200 terawatt per hour, which indicates a 14% decrease in energy consumption since 2005. It may seem a little bit slow, but in fact it, it also includes the COVID effect, which was uh, temporary. Another way to look at the energy used in France, um, uh, this is on the left hand side. Um, you can see the energy mixed in France with in yellow the nuclear part which is 40%, uh, the oil 28%, natural gas 16%, and renewable, 13% of our energy mix. Half of the renewable is biomass and hydroelectricity. On the right hand side, you can see um, uh, that the transport sector in the deep blue represents 30% uh, of our national emission. This is the first emitting sector in France followed by the buildings in the red with 19%. It's even 28% uh, uh, if we add the emissions linked to the heating and cooling of the building. Then agricultural sector, 19% and industry, 17%. So this is the situation today. And now where do we want to go? This 
This is an interesting slide, but that may look a little bit complicated. So let's start with our carbon emission today in red color. Uh, the total of emission is 440 million tonnes. And we want to reduce it to f by 40% by, uh, by 2030. And then to less than 80 million tonnes in 2050. Now, if we look at the distribution by sectors, you can see that a huge effort is being done in transport and building sector, where we plan to almost eliminate the carbon emission by 2050. You can, you can also see that the performance of our uh, agricultural sector is uh, more modest. Um, uh, it's because uh, there is a significant part of the emissions that are not directly directed to the related to the energy. I will come back also on that. So this is the situation in France in uh, 2050, where we should reach a level of emission that we consider incompressible at around 80 million tons. Uh, most of these residual emissions will come from agriculture and industry sector. As I said before, our carbon neutrality target means that the volume of emission in 2050 will have to be balanced by the same volume, volume of uh, carbon absorption. And so to achieve carbon neutrality, we must uh, compensate all these remaining emissions with carbon sinks, um, natural ecosystem like uh, forest or um, agricultural land, or artificial system uh, that capture significant amount of carbon dioxide. So to reach our net zero target, uh, our strategy has defined carbon budgets, which are uh, emission caps not to be exceeded per period of five years uh, until 2033. So you can see on this chart our uh, four consecutive carbon budgets which define maximum carbon emission ceilings for the period that goes from 2015 to 2033. And what you can see in red, in the center of the slide, in red color, it's an overrun of our first carbon budget ending in 2018, because the carbon emission only decreased by 1% per year on average, instead of 2.2% and that uh, overshooting can be explained by two cyclical factors. First, the low price of en energy at that time, which resulted in an increase of uh, energy consumption. And second, the temporary non-availability of some of our nuclear reactors because of maintenance operation. Those two factors were temporary. And so that led us to revise the next carbon budget in line with a new baseline scenario. This slide shows two types of distribution of our next carbon budgets. What you can see on the left hand side is a significant effort that, we, that, that, that will be made to reduce emission on building sectors in gray and in the industry sector in blue, and transport sector too in uh, pink color. Uh, this uh, it should be a 30% reduction in the period. It also shows the decreasing that de it also shows on the right hand side that decreasing methane, which is in orange color, or nitrous oxide, which is in green it's much more challenging. And one of the reasons is that they are mainly generated by agricultural processes, and you cannot significantly reduce this type of gas uh, without questioning the type uh, our agric uh, agricultural model 
and agricultural practices. So now, uh, what do we need to do to reach carbon neutrality? Uh, first, we need to fully decarbonize energy production, which means no more fossil fuel by 2050, and uh, we'll rely only on biomass resources um, generated by agricultural product waste, for example, uh, on heat from the environment, uh, like uh, geothermal energy or uh, marine power, carbon-free electricity like uh, nuclear energy, solar and wind. We also need to reduce energy used in all sectors of activities with a 40% reduction target in 2050. Um, and uh, that means uh, increasing the energy efficiency and developing sobriety and sufficiency, which means changing consumption patterns. We also need to reduce non-energy related emissions in the farming sector and in the industrial processes. Finally, we need to increase carbon sinks by a factor of two compared to today to absorb uh, incompressible residual emissions by 2050. So, if we look at the carbon, carbon footprint uh, target now, uh, carbon footprint of the French people is around uh, six tons per capita, but if you include emissions linked to consumption uh, of imported goods and services, the carbon footprint of the French people is around 11 tons per capita. And so the target is to reduce it from 11, 11 tons to 2 tons per capita by 2050. And to do that, uh, we need to better control the content of imported products at the EU level. And one of the tools that we have to do that is the carbon border adjustment mechanism. We also need to encourage all the players to control their carbon footprint. Now, to conclude my presentation, uh, I'd like to uh, share with you some of the lessons that we've learned from our strategy. The first idea is uh, that having a fleet of nuclear reactors is clearly an advantage for us because it makes the transition easier. But in the case of France, it has delayed a little bit our transition to renewable energies. We are now behind on our European commitments in this area. Second idea is that significant action cannot be delayed. And in fact, to give us a chance of reaching our targets, it's necessary to develop renewable energy as quickly as possible and at the same time to invest to extend the lifetime of the existing nuclear reactor in order to maximize low carbon uh, generation. And the longer you wait to adjust the trajectory and the, the more important and painful the effort will be. The third idea is about the difficulty that we have when we talk about carbon emission, because it's not just about reducing emission, it's also reducing consumption, which means changing behaviors, behaviors of businesses and individuals, and which means um, uh, developing sobriety, sufficiency, which means lower population needs and changing consumption patterns, which of course uh, is difficult and requires a little bit of time. And finally, uh, this question, how can we convince the actor of the urgency to act and get out of the living and business as usual? Um, we need to use different kind of levers, pedagogy, information, regulation, incentives, and probably sanction at some point. In France, we are clearly in the middle of the first stage. Awareness 
of the issue and of the impact of climate change is developing, there is a real need to, uh, to get some clear and complete information, which is not easy because it requires some scientific and pedagogical skills to make the urgency and the complexity of these issues understood by everybody. But uh, it's the prerequisite to inspire people and to embark them on this ambitious uh, strategy. Thank you. <laughs>